Thomasina Winifred Montgomery, also known as Tammy Terrell, was born on April 29, 1945, to her mother, Jeannie Graham, and her father, Thomas Montgomery. Now, her mom and dad, they thought she was going to be a boy, so they already had the name Thomas Jr. lined up, but, you know, once Tammy came along, they had to switch it up. That's where she got the name Thomasina. She never really liked the name either. And uh, growing up, you know, Tammy had to deal with her mom being in and out of mental health facilities, you know, because her mom had some mental health problems. So she would receive like electroshock therapy and things of that nature. And uh, Tammy, she had some things she was dealing with, too. Like she used to have real bad headaches, you know, as a kid. And one of her cousins said they remember, you know, she used to get these veins under her eyes at times, you know, and and for some reason they came to the conclusion that it was something with her eyesight. You know, they never thought to really test for anything else, you know, and, and not only that, at the young age of 11, Tammy would experience something that no, no, no young girl, no person should ever have to experience. She was uh, raped by three older boys as she was leaving a neighborhood party. And uh, this, this kind of changed her, man. She she withdrew from the world. She didn't want to talk to nobody. And for months, you know, she was just pretty much in seclusion. But according to her family and friends, they say that once she came back, she was like a new person. You know, she was more open, more even more outgoing than she was before. And she was definitely interested in boys. You know, even after the traumatic experience, they said she was... um you know, very um, promiscuous. And this is also the time that she changed her name from Thomasina to Tammy, you know, because she liked a movie called uh, Tammy and the Bachelor. It's a comedy from back in the way back in the day. And that's where she got her name from. And this is also the time that she started doing like local talent shows around Philadelphia. You know, she was from North, North Philly, you know, so she was doing talent shows and Eventually, one day she was discovered by a man named Luther Dixon, and he was uh, with the record company called Skepta Records. And this is when Tammy would record her first song. It's called If You See Bill. And what's crazy about this song is that, man, she was like 13 years old at this time, but she sounded like a 21 year old woman, man. man she could sing tammy's talent was undeniable but the label she was with really didn't see that because they had her doing like a lot of demos for other bigger stars that were on the label and eventually tammy got tired of it and she left the label and that's when she would meet a man by the name of steve gibson now he was the lead musician for a band called the red caps and he offered her to come out, you know, and open for them. He wanted her to be the lead singer. And she did that. And this would teach Tammy about being a performer because she was going like six nights a week and she was doing like five shows a night or something like that. I mean, it was like a crazy schedule. So it taught her work ethic. But her mom wanted more for her. So what her mom did was as um, James Brown was performing in Atlantic City, her mom drove from Philly to Atlantic City to track down James Brown and convince him to come watch her daughter sing. And James Brown, he did that. He agreed. And when James Brown heard Tammy sing, he fell in love with everything about her, her voice, her look, and he immediately signed her to his record label. And next thing you know, 16-year-old Tammy was out on the road with Mr. Dynamite himself, James Brown. He was about 34 about this time. And um, they was in a relationship. James Brown was in a relationship with Tammy. It was uh, volatile, to say the least. Um, it's said that James Brown used to beat her a lot. You know, knocked her teeth out, all kinds of stuff. Blacked her eye. It's another story out there that um, 
James Brown used to have a thing where he used to tell her that she needs to stay by the stage while he's performing and just watch him. And he would look back to always make sure that she was there. And this one particular day, Tammy wasn't there. And they say when James Brown got off that stage, man, and found Tammy, he beat her so bad. They said he kicked her downstairs, man, all kinds of stuff. And, you know, Tammy just pushed through, you know, and uh, she wanted to make it in the music business. And she also she had started her own group as well called the Sherry's. And they was on James Brown record label, you know, and it's funny because Tammy started the group. But she ended up getting kicked out of the group, you know, and going on solo. Um, eventually, she did release one song on James Brown's record label. It's called I Cried. And that was actually her her first charting record, you know, and I think it's probably called I Cried. If you listen to that record, it's probably because of everything that she was going through at that time with James Brown, you know, and his, you know, his abuse towards her. But. Um, luckily, she, she gathered the courage to finally leave him and she eventually signed with a uh, checker checker records. And um, when she signed there, she ended up doing some duet uh, music with an artist by the name of Jimmy Radcliffe. But the music they made, it pretty much it failed. You know, it didn't go nowhere. And it's just discouraged Tammy, you know, going through the situation with James Brown and now going to another label and still not really getting to where you want to go. Eventually, she just decided she was going to give up on the music game, you know. And this is when Tammy went to uh, Penn University, Penn University of Pennsylvania, on a full scholarship for uh, pre-med, you know. So Tammy, she definitely wasn't no dummy, you know. And she would go on to do this for the next few years, you know. She had pretty much given up on music. That is until a man by the name of Jerry Butler came into her life. Now, see, Jerry Butler was a Philadelphia soul legend and he offered for Tammy to go on a road with him. And he promised her that he would set it up to where she could still go to school as well. You know, but just so happened on one of these dates, they was at a club in Detroit called 20 Grand. And who was at that club? None other than Barry Gordy, the CEO of Motown. And when he heard Tammy sing and he saw how beautiful she was, he went up to her and told her, like, I'm finna sign you to Motown. And on April 29th, 1965, on Tammy's 20th birthday, that's exactly what happened. So now you got the talent of Tammy Terrell with the backing of Motown. It was only a matter of time before she became a full blown superstar. And she released her first song called I Can't Believe You Love Me on Motown. And this became like her highest charting uh, solo single. It uh, reached number 40 on the charts. So Tammy Terrell was starting to rise. And she, this is also the time that she would go on tour, the Motown Review, and she would be opening for The Temptations. And this is when the infamous and legendary Mr. David Ruffin would come into play because, you know, they started to have a thing with each other. But this thing was very volatile, you know, and it said that David beat her a lot, you know, during this time. It said that he hit her in the head with his motorcycle helmet before all kinds of craziness, man. So it was a very sad situation that she found herself in with David. Not only that, he was married at the time as well. So it was just bad all the way around. But uh, Tammy, you know, she would push on and eventually Marvin Gaye, you know, he would come into the picture. He would, uh, you know, he was known for doing duets. You know, he had did some with Mary Wells, Kim Weston, you know, when he was looking for another duet partner. He had some songs that he had wrote and Barry Gordy came up with the idea of, hey, I have this new artist, Tammy Terrell. You know, I can push her with Marvin Gaye. He's already popular and maybe that can give her career some extra momentum. And man, when Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell came together, it was nothing short of magical.
Man, those two were so amazing together. And what makes it even more crazy is that they weren't even in the studio together when they were recording Ain't No Mountain High Enough. They did their vocals separately because that was like the first time they ever worked together. But after they seen the chemistry and they struck gold with that, the hits, they just kept rolling in, you know, especially when you had Ashford and Simpson writing for them. They had songs like Your Precious Love, If This World Were Mine. And uh, Marvin said that was actually Tammy's favorite song, you know, and they was a hot duo. You know, they started touring together. Um, you know, they was very popular and they were very close. Marvin Gaye truly loved Tammy Terrell, not in a relationship type way or a sexual type of way, in a strictly platonic way. He really cared for her and they really had a connection, especially when it came to their music. And like I said, you know, they went on a tour together for a while. But during this tour, Tammy would suffer from migraines constantly, frequently. And one night in 1967, when they was performing in Virginia in a place called Farmville, Tammy collapsed in Marvin's arms as they were singing the song, Your Precious Love. And um, Marvin, he caught her carried her to the back you know they rushed her to the hospital uh, eventually they got her you know back home to Philadelphia and that's when she was diagnosed with a brain tumor you know and she underwent her first surgery to try to correct that in 1968 and after she recovered from surgery you know she returned to try to do music you know she recorded the songs you're all I need to get by it ain't nothing like the real thing. You know, both of those went number one, you know, so even after her surgeries, her talent was shining through and she made two more number one songs and uh, she wanted to keep touring, too. But her doctors told her she couldn't tour no more. You know, the tumor started getting worse and worse. And she just, you know, she had to retire from live live performing altogether. She did release an album in early 1969. It was her solo album, her only one, and it was called Irresistible. But see, by this time, Tammy was too sick to promote the album or do any type of touring. So the album just kind of went by the wayside. You know, nobody really remembers it. And uh, her and Marvin did another album as well, and it was called Easy. But it, the album had controversy around it because according to Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell was not really singing on that album. It was a woman by the name of Valerie Simpson, but according to Valerie Simpson, it was Tammy Terrell as well, that when Tammy was feeling good, she would come in and sing. So it, it was Tammy, but Marvin said it was just a money grab by Motown Records. So who knows what's the, you know, what's the real truth. But what is known is that Tammy's last public appearance would be in late 1969 at the Apollo Theater where Marvin Gaye would be performing. And it's said that when Marvin Gaye seen Tammy in the crowd, he ran over to her to be by her side. And they began to sing, you're all I need to get by. And they said the crowd went wild, man. Like everybody was just celebrating and cheering because they knew how special that moment was and how much it meant. And uh, they got a standing ovation. But not too long after this, Tammy's health would begin to fail. She began to suffer from blindness, hair loss. I mean, she got down to like 90 pounds, man. She was real sick due to the effects of her brain tumor. And she ended up undergoing eight surgeries, not even really to heal or cure the issue, but just to kind of heal her pain a little bit because she was in so much of it all the time. But unfortunately, on March 16th, 1970 Tammy Terrell passed away and you would think that her funeral would be a star-studded event with her being a Motown artist and with Motown having so many legends but it wasn't because allegedly Tammy Terrell's mother banned all of Motown from coming to Tammy's funeral she banned everybody except one person Marvin Gaye she let him do her eulogy while they played You're All I Need to Get By in the background. 
it said that Marvin never really got over the death of Tammy Terrell. And that was part of the reason that he ended up going in that downward spiral into that depression he found himself in. But what is known is that the music that they created together will always live on. And Miss Tammy Terrell will always be an angel. And I just wanted to make a video for her because I feel like she's unsung. But she will always live on. And she was only 24 years old when she died.